Good morning, church. Welcome to St. John's Now Church of Christ in Vincennes, Indiana. And whether you're here or whether you're at home or again on Facebook Live, know that whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. If you're here and present with us, please fill out the pew pads and then send them back to the center aisle. If you're at home, click the like button or make a comment so we may know of your presence. I invite you to take a look at the events calendar for this week. Evangelism membership meet on Monday. Phoebe's mission is on Friday. On Saturday, our youth are doing a cleanup day. So please note those things. Uh, next Sunday, May 7th, there's a fellowship time at 10 a.m. <clears throat> in uh, Memorial Hall. Uh, after more than two years of COVID restrictions, it's good that we can get together in fellowship. And thank Brenda Cummins for providing this important ministry. Now, if you think this ministry is important in the life of the church and you would like to help, please talk to Brenda. Okay. Um, we're going to be honoring graduates. You see that announcement in the uh, bulletin. Please uh, get that information to the office so we may know who to, re to uh, uh, honor. Uh, we've also left the announcement in about uh, helping Sullivan County and we're going to try to get some more information this week about what their present needs are. Reminder that the Indiana Kentucky Conference uh, meets uh, on the 1st through the 3rd of June. We'll be needing some delegates for that. And of course, volunteers are needed for General Synod. Oh, yes, congratulations to Mark Lang, who is the 2023 James McCormick Community Leader. It says in the press release, uh, no, this is not about you, Mark. Uh, not yet. The James McCormick Community Leader of the Year Award for an individual who has made a significant impact in Knox County and enhanced the quality of life for the area residents. This person would be the unsung hero who has constantly worked to make Knox County a better place. It's about time they figured that out, I think, huh? Yep, yep. Unsung, especially in the afternoons. You know? Okay, great. Congratulations, Mark. We're very pleased. Um, okay, prayers. Uh, prayers for Angie Robinson, our secretary, uh, on the death of her mother, Sandy Lane, on Friday, April 28th. Uh, our apologies for the incorrect information in the bulletin. And um, visitation will be Tuesday and funeral on Wednesday at Deusterberg Fr Frederick Funeral Home. We don't have the times yet. Uh, continue prayers for Josie. And Josie's here, right? Hi, Josie. She's had this troublesome toe, and it is getting better. A second round of antibiotics. She has her shoes on today, which is a good thing. So hi, Josie. <laughs> Prayers extended to Gabriel Gabby Miller Gott, who is in Deaconess Neurology, getting further tests related to her accident falling down her basement stairs. Uh, Gabriel's mother is Donna Gerhardt. Please continue to pray for those who are, of course, on our prayer list, those who are living in, uh, at home, uh, homebound, those who are in the midst of, uh, of living in health care facilities and assisted living. Are there other announcements or concerns that we need to know about? Okay, if not, I invite all who are able, please rise and greet each other in the name of the Lord.
come, all you who thirst for the living God. Come, you who are in need of good news. Come and find refuge in the eternal God who is love. Together, let us pray. O oh God, distant yet near, we gather as witnesses to your promise that if we seek you with all our hearts, we will find you. Be among us this day. Hear the confession of our mouths and the yearnings of our hearts. Help us change the narrowness of our vision and the pettiness of our living. Make us new again with your glory and grace. Grant us the maturity to accept your many gifts in humility and to use them with faithfulness. Grant to us your spirit that our worship may have integrity and energy, ever witnessing to your holy presence in our lives. We praise and give you eternal presence. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
invite the children please come forward. Well, good morning. How are you all? Good. Good. Yeah, I know you're good. We had a little conversation earlier. I'm glad you're here this morning. All right. Now, do you know the story of three little pigs? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so does it go like this? Let's see. Three little pigs are three little pigs, and they, they were going off into the world, uh, and, and so the three little pigs each built a house, right? The first pig built their house out of what? Straw. This, right. The second pig built his house out of sticks. That's right. And the third pig? Bricks. That's right. Okay, I think you know this story. So, so they're out living in the house, right? And who shows up? Big bad wolf. That's right. The big bad wolf. And the big bad wolf bangs on the door of the piggy, first piggy's house and says, let me come in. And the little piggy says what? Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And the wolf says, well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And that's exactly what he did, didn't he? Because the straw wasn't very strong, so he blew the house down. The wolf goes to the second piggy's house, house of sticks. And he says, he says to the second pig, bangs on his door and says, let me come in. And what does the little piggy say? Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. And so the wolf says, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And he blew the stick house down. Well, then he went to the third piggy's house. And that was made out of brick. And so he again knocked on the door and says, let me in. And the, and the, uh, the piggy said to him, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Ah, you did better than I did at that time. Okay, chin chin chin. All right, so the, he says, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, right? And he blew and he blew and what happened? He can't do it, he can't do it can he? That's right, it, he, can't, he can't blow it down. So they, and the, all the three piggies got together and says, who's afraid of the big bad wolf, big bad wolf? big bad wolf who's afraid of the big bad wolf not us right okay well there are other stories about big bad wolves uh can you think of any little red riding hood that's right and uh can you think of any others how about peter and the wolf you know that story okay or the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so, the, and and so, um, big. You know, that last story helps us understand that we need to tell the truth, right? We need not to raise false alarms. Now, did you know that Jesus told a wolf story? No. Okay. Well, something like this. See, Jesus talked about uh, the job of the shepherd. And there was this, the, a sheep's fold, which was like a corral or a shelter, where the sheep would stay at night to be protected from predators. And so Jesus would say, you know, well, the hired hand would run away when the big bad wolf would come because they weren't his sheep. But the shepherd, the shepherd remains to protect the sheep from the big bad wolf. And in this story, the wolf, bad, big bad wolf, are enemies and, and people and things that want to hurt us, that want, that want to, to uh, um, bring us harm and then bring Jesus harm. And so he says that, you know, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. And I know the Father, or God, and God knows me, and God knows you. 
and I will lay down my life for my sheep. So Jesus is the good shepherd and we are Jesus' sheep and Jesus will protect us all the time and promises to us a life that is eternal in God's kingdom. For the shepherd is the one who cares for the sheep and protects them from the big bad wolf. Will you pray with me please? Dear God, we thank you for your son who protects us and watches over us. And we thank you for the opportunities that you give to us to serve him and to serve you. We know, O oh God, that uh, you are a God of love and grace. And we thank you, O oh God, for the blessings that you shower upon us, especially upon these children who are here and all the children of the world. Watch over them and protect them, guide them and love them. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You return to your seats or go to Children's Church. Jesus is the good shepherd, the one who watches over us and protects us and cares for us. The son of a God of abundance, of grace and mercy. A God that provides for us all that we have. Gives us the opportunities that are given to us, but that we have time and talent and also our treasures. And so we give thanks on this day of worship, as we always do. Thanks for the many blessings God has upon us and the opportunities to share those, uh, those gifts with others. So let's prepare to bring forth our morning offering. All right, all right, please rise. Together, let us pray. God, we present these offerings that they may be used to extend your liberating reign. With them, we offer our varied ministries in the days ahead, that each of us may be part of your answer to the cries of the world. Amen. You may be seated. We now turn to the word of God. Here first from the Psalms, a familiar one, the 23rd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. In these words from the book of Acts, second chapter. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. 
Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used his figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come, come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God. We be blessed by the reading, the living, and the hearing of it. Amen.
I would like you to take a look at the back of your bulletin. I think there's some very helpful information on there for personal use today. It follows along with the 23rd Psalm and kind of offers you a prayer meditation on that psalm that you can use during the week or any time you want to, but um, to deliberately use the 23rd Psalm in your prayers. And now let us pray. Great and eternal God, as we come in these moments, grant that we might listen with our hearts. Grant that we might listen in all of this service of worship, and even when we live, leave here, listen with our hearts, seeking to hear your voice. And then help us in responding. Grant that this thy servant might be truthful and faithful to your word. Amen. Since there's such an emphasis, emphasis about sheep today in our scripture lessons, I thought I'd share with you a variety of things about sheep. Apparently, one farmer was talking to a sheep one day and with a lot of excitement said to his sheep, I love my job. The sheep expressed his complaint. All you do is boss me around all day. What did you say? challenged the farmer. The sheep glared back and growled. You heard me. Heard. Heard, H-E-R-D. Question. Maybe I should ask Dennis this question first. Keep, keep it on your toes. If a sheep is in control of a country, it will be called, I'll give you the answer quick, a dictator sheep. What do you call a flock of sheep tumbling down a hill? A landslide. And finally, a conversation between a shepherd and his sheepdog. It's near the end of the day and the sheep need to be brought in to the pen. And the shepherd's kind of tired. So the shepherd asks his dependable and trustworthy sheepdog to get all the sheep into the pen. Right away, sir, says the sheepdog. It wasn't too long until the shepherd looked out the window and saw that all the sheep were in the pen and the dog, the sheep dog had done just what he had asked. The shepherd sees the sheep dog coming and opens the door so the sheep dog can come in. Excellent work. Did you get all of them? asks the shepherd. Yes, all 40 of them, says the sheep dog. The shepherd stares confusedly at the sheepdog. Hang on, I thought I only had 37 sheep. The sheepdog replies, yes, well I rounded them up. Now on to something more serious, the University of Illinois has done a study about sheep behavior and some of the highlights as I summarize them are, sheep aren't stupid. In intelligence, they're just a little bit lower than a pig and about even with cattle. They have instinctive behavior. They will run from what frightens them. They are grazers. Before they were domesticated, says the study, they got all of their food supply from grazing grass. So that meant that for them to survive, they would run from danger and also band together in large numbers for protection while they were grazing. They're also gregarious and social, 
staying together, again, partially for protection. They will follow each other and will move forward, will, mo will move away, excuse me, they will follow each other and will move toward another sheep or someone else they sense as a friend. However, if they sense danger, they will run away. So there are legitimate comparisons between sheep and between humans. After reading that, I think some of us humans might learn something from sheep. In today's lesson from John, we have several images relating to shepherding. There's the sheepfold or the sheep pen, the gate, a thief and abandoned. There's the shepherd, the gatekeeper, a stranger. There are voices. There is pasture. And there's the lure of abundant life. At the beginning of the lesson, Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Or another way of saying that is, I am the door of the sheep. I just was looking at um, the window as we were singing the hymn, which is one of my favorite hymns. Singing the hymn and thinking of Jesus knocking on the door. Well, the, the church I grew up in, and at least one other church that I have served, but the church I grew up in had a stained glass window that you could see from the chancel, which was Jesus the Good Shepherd carrying a lamb in his arms. Both of those very good images. The Gospel of John is not only known for the signs sayings. Remember a while back we talked about the signs in the Gospel of John, the seven signs that people shared so others might come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. But the Gospel is also known for the seven I am sayings, sayings that Jesus makes about himself. I am the gate which is in today's lesson, is one of those. And right after today's lesson, in the next verse, we hear Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. The other I am statements in the gospel are, I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the way and the truth and the life, and I am the vine. So what's being a shepherd like? Have any of you ever shepherded sheep? Have you owned sheep? No sheep owners here? Well, I didn't grow up on a farm with sheep either. Well, 19th century biblical scholar George Adam Smith told about coming across a shepherd and a sheep one time when he was traveling in the Holy Land. In his encounter with the shepherd, the shepherd showed him the fold, which had four walls with one opening, one way in. The story I read recounts the conversation between Smith and the shepherd. Smith asked him, this is where they go at night? Yes, said the shepherd. And when they are in, they are perfectly safe. But there's no door, said Smith. I am the door, said the shepherd. He was not a Christian man and wasn't speaking in the language of the New Testament. He was speaking from an Arab shepherd's point of view. Smith looked at him and asked, What do you mean you are the door? The shepherd answered, when the light has gone and all the sheep are inside, I lie in the open space, and no sheep ever goes out across my body, and no wolf ever comes in unless he crosses my body. I am the door. There is a relationship of trust between the shepherd and the sheep. When the shepherd is near, the sheep 
don't sense danger because they know the shepherd will be the one who guards them, who keeps them safe, who protects them from danger. The shepherd will not abandon them. Remember the, the parable of the lost sheep? One sheep out of, out of a hundred was gone and the shepherd would not abandon that sheep. The shepherd went out and searched and searched until finding the sheep. The shepherd calls the sheep by name. We had a reference in the opening hymn to God calling us by name. The shepherd calls the sheep by name. One commentary about the relation between shepherd and sheep in Jesus' day says, in that culture, people considered a person's name to be more than a simple label to identify that person. They believed something of the person's identity was tied up in the name. The, that the name expressed something of the person's essential character. The point of this verse is that, the good is that the Good Shepherd knows the sheep with the same kind of intimacy that we have with friends and neighbors. The voice of the shepherd is important, calling the sheep by name or calling the sheep to come in. The sheep know the shepherd's voice but they don't know the voice of strangers. So the sheep are smart enough not to listen when a stranger speaks. Maybe we could learn something from them in a day and age when there are so many voices seeking our attention, calling for our allegiance, and so many who are saying things that aren't true just to get people to follow them, just to be divisive, just to make money, or just to get a crowd. In his introduction, Listening Hearts, in the introduction, Listening Hearts, the authors ask an important question. How can we distinguish God's voice from all the other voices that cl clamor at us, those of our culture, peer pressure, our careers, our egos. How might we better make discernment about the voices that we're listening to? We might ask ourselves that question. Like the sheep, we might trust our instincts while being aware of our own biases. Doing our research is also important. If we hear something, if we hear someone telling us something, do we check it out? Do we seek out actual facts about what we're hearing or what someone has shared? Do we seek to find out if the voice is actually trustworthy? I'm sure like many of you, or I'm sure many of you like I have, gotten many things on Facebook or on some other form of social media. And I've tried to make it a habit, I, I usually end up just not passing things along, but I've tried to make it a habit to check out things and make sure they're factual before just sending them along. Because you send it along and then it goes to a million people and then a million people hear it or read it or see it. And if it's not true, then we have all of that out there that simply isn't factual. So sometimes people, relatives and other people, send things to me and I, I, I look at it. If I don't have time to fact check it, I just don't send it along. 
There is so much on social media that's good, that's inspiring, that is factual. But checking it out is important. Do we see if the voices we are hearing are consistent and do we ask if they're consistent with a message of Christ? A message promoting love, justice, truthfulness, goodness, peace, wellness, and wholeness for all. Do we seek out others who we know have been trustworthy with us in the past? and talk to them about something that maybe we heard and what do they think about it and is it true if we're not able to find that fact somewhere else. In the lesson from today, the shepherd is the one who leads the sheep out into open, green, good, life-giving pastures. At the end of the story, Jesus told his hearers, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We yearn for abundant life. The rock band, you too, wrote the song, I still, still haven't found what I'm looking for. Some of the lyrics go like this, I have climbed the highest mountains. I have run through the fields. I have run, I have crawled, I have scaled these city walls. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Many are looking and searching for life, life that is abundant and life that is full, life that is good, life that is life-giving. And the gospel, and the church, this church, other communities of faith, have a message about life that is good, life that is full, life that is abundant. The treasure that the message has, the treasure that is found in the Gospel of John and in the, the Gospels. In his commentary on John, Barnabas Linder says that when the lesson uses the word abundantly, it is perhaps an allusion to the plentiful pasture described in Ezekiel, or alternatively, a reminiscence of the saying of Jesus in Matthew, to him who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. Linders also talks about the meaning of life in the Old Testament, saying, just as death denotes a weakened existence, stripped of all good things and cut off from God, so life includes all the positive aspects of social well-being and fellowship with God. It is with this large range of meaning that life constitutes one of the great themes of the fourth gospel, frequently defined as eternal life. We yearn for abundant life, and so many others yearn for abundant life. Mary Cyphers says about the message of the gospel, John writes of the new flock that experiences generosity, a reliable shepherd, safe enclosure from danger, and good pasture. This generous care brings about abundant life for the whole community. And I would add, also the community that is beyond the community of the church. In his writing, the door to abundant life. Peter W. Marty shares a story called, What's the Gimmick? And here's the story. 
For years, St. Anthony's Church in San Francisco has served meals to people in need. Over the doorway to its dining room, the church has posted a sign bearing the inscription, Cartate Dei. One day, a young mechanic, just released from jail and new to St. Anthony's, entered the door and sat down for a meal. A woman was busy cleaning the adjoining table. When do we get on our knees and do the chores, lady? He asked. You don't, she replied. Then when's the sermon coming? He asked. Aren't any, she said. How about the lecture on life, huh? Not here, she said. The man was suspicious. Then what's the gimmick? The woman pointed to the sign over the door. He squinted at it and asked, what's it mean, lady? Out of love for God, she smiled and moved on to another table. Marty says, check out the inscription over the next door in life. If it has to do with genuine love for God, you won't go wrong. Hopefully, as people come to the doors of this church, needing help, needing service, or entering looking for peace, as we come here to worship, we can see over the doors for the love, of God and that people can see in the doors of our lives the inscription for the love of God. Amen.
that God invites, that God desires for you to be God's servant, God's people. Go forth and answer that call. Here I am, send me. Go forth responding to that summons, serving God and loving God, serving neighbor and loving neighbor as self. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Creator, Redeemer, and Christ be with you this day and forever. Amen.